presents Games for the End of the World together with Lynx. Hey, I'm Tom Deacon, and this is Games for the End of the World, together with Lynx. Now, each week, I'll have a guest come and join me in the bunkers to talk about the games they love, the games they hate, and the games that have made them the people they are today. Why? I hear you cry. Well, because why not? It's the end of the world. Now, my guest this week is most famous potentially for being one of the stars in the Inbetweeners, but not just that. It's also the fact he has voiced nearly over a hundred episodes of Bob the Builder, <laughs> scored the last goal in the Soccer Raid at 2018, and is currently starring in The Waitress in the West End. It's the one and only Mr. Blake Harrison. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, if it's the end of the world, who is watching this? Uh, there must be a very good like streaming internet connection at the end of the world yeah someone's got it someone's I, watching it yeah you know like sometimes yeah. you're on a train and you just and someone's on their phone for the whole journey and you're thinking what reception are they on because yeah. i've never had that mine always cuts off yeah, it's the, the same sort of a thing a nuke hadn't just gone off or something then that's yeah i suppose so how yeah. are you finding the apocalypse yeah i mean i'm i'm still here and i've got all my limbs i'm not like radioactive or anything so it's not ideal oh, that's what i've no. been saying about the end of the world it's, it's not been ideal not, not been, I, I did not prepare for this no at all i mean i don't know where the wife and kids are no uh, i mean i've got a lot more time for gaming though so you know picks and troughs um if there was a character from the gaming world that you would like in an, in an end of the world apocalypse sort of situation, which character would you like with you? Oh, God. Um, oh, off the top of my head, I'm going to go Snake. Snake Pliskin. You got to. I think you know, Metal Metal Gear. Gear, I mean, you, you're going to survive if you're alongside Snake, aren't you? Yeah. And I think it'll be all right. It'll take a bit of pity on you. Yeah. It'll be like, oh, you rubbish human being, you. You yeah. don't know how to start a fire or. Yeah hunt for squirrels or whatever it is but it'll be able to help you did you yeah. you obviously i imagine you played that game metal gear solid i, play, I only played metal gear solid 2 which i loved at the time it was like my favorite game ever but i didn't play the first one and i never played any games since yeah so i only played um and played metal gear solid 2 and obviously you're you're riding in or raiden or whatever his name was in, in most of that game but but snake was great i remember playing that the demo came out and it was the the snake on like a ship or something yeah. like that and yeah, i played yeah. that constantly until the game came out yeah then got the game and was like who's this blonde guy oh, i wanted no. to be the the badass with the eye patch because i played it on the nes the original nes metal gear which yeah. was which was horrendously good and also horrendously bad but but when you you, you mentioned demos did you yeah. ever buy the, the sort of gaming magazines and oh get yeah the demo? big time that's how yeah. you lived your life you were like oh, oh this is the demo i've got to buy the i'd the always check what games were going to be on the demo and I'd be like, yeah, that's worth getting. Get that. I'd read the magazines all the time and just work out what game's coming out. They'd always be like, because I was big, like FIFA, then Pro Evo, and then kind of back to FIFA and stuff. And uh, it would always be like, oh, what mod modifications have they made to the gameplay yeah, or this yeah. or that? And generally speaking, it always like, <laughs> after you, you, like, you play it the first time, you're like, oh my God, it's completely different. And then after like a couple of days, you're like, oh no, it's, it's just a football game. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's the same thing. I think we just got sucked into the fact that the, the names have changed, new kits have come out. And That's it. Yeah, the getting you immersing yourself. Well, all right then, um, Mr. Blake. Uh, let's take Mr. you back. Mr. Blake. Well, I think Thanks. that's polite. No, it's good. It's like Mr. T. That's how I like to be addressed <laughs> with most Mr. of my life. <laughs> Mr. Blake. Uh, by the way, did you enjoy the introduction? Loved it. In between us, Bob the Builder. Bob the Builder is very important to me. Sure. We've got to get Bob in there. It's yeah. my kid's favourite, so we have to get Bob in there. Okay. And and uh, uh, can we fix it? Yes, we can. I liked his sort of can-do attitude, which is, we very definitely need. Yeah. We need that in the apocalypse. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, Blake. Well, let's take you right back then. Uh, first sort of gaming memories, like, was there a console that you had at the family? The first yeah. maybe game you played? Uh, the, the, what Again, I've got very vague memories of it, but the first console I had was a Commodore 64, uh -huh. and I remember particularly having a mate who who would live two doors down from me would come over and we'd play it and there was a robocop game mm -hmm. that i remember and what we loved about it i can't remember how old it was. I, I genuinely might have been like seven eight i can't remember but what we loved about it more than anything else is if you got robocop crushed in this kind of like <laughs> under these like metal things that came down and all that kind of stuff it would make the sound of someone farting <laughs> So it's like this really like serious like RoboCop game like two D you know, like going along and everything, and then he just got crushing it. And you just hear, <laughs> and I was like seven. I thought it was the most hilarious thing you've ever yeah. heard in your life. So I, I would have loved it because I was giggling along there just the thought of it. Because <laughs> everyone it. plays the game differently for different reasons, but yeah. you were playing 
the to anti-game. Kill him. Yeah, to kill yeah, him. To kill him and get the fart noise. That's what, what we always wanted. This was the game where the, 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 the sort of the attackers would be coming out the window and try and shoot, and you'd have to shoot up or down or to an angle and try and. I, and take... remember, I remember see that he was there, like he was like two D was, figure. It wasn't like first person. Yeah. It was uh yeah like third person, but two D scrolling along, and I think I'm assuming people would just come along and shoot and yeah and whatever. I can't really remember. All I remember is him getting crushed under these kind of metal cylinders that would just come down and squash him and there'd be a fart noise and we'd all crack up laughing yeah but at least you're enjoying it not getting any sort of gamers rage uh, no there point. were no gamers no we quite happy for him to die <laughs> it was it was literally the reason we played it um did, so was it your commodore 64 then it was mine yes okay so how did that come was that a birthday a christmas gift honestly don't remember no i cannot remember all i i, I just vaguely remember was it like cassette tapes that you plugged yeah, in. putting cassette tapes into a... <laughs> no, but not even like the cartridges. Like no? proper cassette tapes like you'd have in like a Walkman. Oh, oh You'd wow. actually put it in and it had the stuff going. I swear it was like that. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Someone's going to be writing, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Um, but, all right, but, so no, but they weren't like the cartridges like this. They were even before that. And I'm sure that they were like proper cassette tapes or something like that. Or maybe I'm getting them mixed up or something else. No, but, I, think, I think you're probably yeah. spot on. It would come in a huge, like games came in a huge book sort of yeah. cover case. And you, yeah. would, one cassette would come out. Totally yeah, unnecessary. Yeah, there were proper manuals back then. Oh, yeah. They really taught you what you were doing. Now people are lazy yeah. when they make these games. There's no proper manuals anymore, I don't think. Did you... Because it was, wasn't it? Like, you'd, you'd need to learn the buttons. So you'd read the manual yeah. first and then go, right, okay, because I don't want to muck it up as soon as I get into this game. And you I could probably learn. read that manual back to front while it was loading. Yeah. But like the loading time on these games was so long. Yeah. So do you kind of miss... You were saying you missed the manual, the guide, Oh, in you know a way. I, I'm, I'm a bit... Because uh, you're a dad now. So the I'm dad, dad, the dad yeah. in... My dad would be very much like, right, we're not opening it out of the box until we've read the manual and understand yeah. it all. I remember the smell of them was great. Yeah. <laughs> the smell of the manuals, I loved it. I know it's a, yeah, I, I would Ooh. love that. I'd love, I'd have a good read of it and then just prep before the, the playing of it. And yeah, I, but then I always love them. Um, I still love buying DVDs yeah. and uh, and stuff. I, like, I'm not really big on the whole streaming culture, really. Okay. I, just, I like something tangible. It's like, you know, I, I, I wouldn't invest in like a Kindle. I want the book yeah. and, and stuff. And I understand that it is easier to have a thousand books on one device or whatever yeah, yeah. it is and stuff but i just i don't know i always just prefer having something tangible it just feels more real to me and there's probably a lot of kids out there saying you'll grow up yeah no but i suppose that the real joy came from that like it's yeah. christmas a birthday once you open that manual you would i i know for a fact i've took it taken that manual on holiday or something just so i'm close to the game <laughs> i want to play <laughs> Where I can, I can be like, no, maybe I'm, maybe I'll learn. Yeah, well, just, just imagine it. Yeah. <laughs> Looking at some pictures. But it would be it. Like at Christmas, you'd be like, you know, I was, oh, can I, can I open the game and play it? And they'd be like, yeah. no, not now. So all you had was the manual. Yes. Or the, yeah. or the pictures on the back of the yeah, cover. You can't play the game on Christ, like Christmas Day until it like gets a bit later in the day. As I got a bit older, we were given a bit more leeway to like yeah. do that. But when I was a kid, it was like, no. And also you'd probably like go to your nans or whatever yeah. it was. That's what was our tradition when we were very young. We'd have to go to, go to nan's house for christmas dinner and stuff so you'd be leaving it behind but i, I tell you what i remember having and taking to my nan's once was a a game gear a oh, sega wow, game gear yes. do you remember that yes yeah i yeah. remember having batman returns on the game gear and columns yeah. and stuff like that and you'd just be slotting that in and playing like sneaking away from the family to be able to play the game gear and stuff yeah but, but that was like as a kid back back then, that was like you were living. You and nothing yeah. got any better. You were still around the family, but you could yeah. portable entertainment. Yeah, uh, that was real magic, I guess. Like, was that was that the next thing you got the Game Gear after I, the Commodore? Well, no, it was the Mega Drive. I got, I, and I think it was a Mega Drive too, because because this one is yeah. ridiculously old. Like as you you pointed out earlier, it's got volume control <laughs> on the console. <laughs> <laughs> Which, how did that work? Yeah, why? Um, why is that there? That, maybe that was for coming out of the consoles. Like, you know, we have the, the sound of the fan whenever you turn on like a PlayStation or something like that. Maybe yeah. you could turn down <laughs> the sound of it. Yeah, I don't want to hear you actually working. Yeah. Uh, just just do. Yeah. Uh, that, they should implement that on new consoles. Let's turn down the fan noise that we keep <laughs> hearing on consoles. Um, so, so, so you, Mega Drive, was, Mega that, was Drive that something too. you wanted? You'd obviously read the gaming yes, magazines. Yes, I think so. And probably my first game that I really, really loved was uh, Streets of Rage 2. Oh, what a game. It was a great game. And I, I, I had a little 
Well, still do, still do. He's still with us, uh, little brother. Uh, he's, uh, <laughs> that would have taken just, a turning point. Oh, God, that would have been oh. uh, the end of the world wasn't bad enough. Um, but uh, but yeah, he's a few years younger than me, and uh, we, you know, you wouldn't be playing a game on your own and then wait for someone to come in. Like yeah. we couldn't play Red Dead now or something like that, you know, because we'd be waiting for each other, taking turns, because we'd love the story modes. So we'd always play co-op games and. Um, uh, Streets of Rage 2 was, was fantastic for that. I was always Axel, and uh-huh. he was always Skate. Okay. So, uh, yeah, and, and I remember Axel's, like, he, they, they used the, the, the special moves that would actually decrease some of their health when you used them. And Axel was just like, yes, Sata! Which is like this <laughs> oh, huge... sweet yeah, yeah, like, yeah, just like a massive upgrade. Yes, Sata! <laughs> and, I, lo- uh, I really like them shimmy. Yeah, the shimmy <laughs> was good. The shimmy was always great. And uh, I think Skate's one, he would, uh, like, jump on their shoulders... Uh, and then just start smashing them in the top of the head while he was on their shoulders. I remember those too. But we completed that a couple of times. Loved that. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's it. You completed the game a couple of times. That must have been a lovely feeling, like to complete it with your brother. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I can't really remember now. But I think those games were like, they were really hard, a lot of the old Mega Dragons. I, yeah. I, I tried to replay The Lion King recently. Um, sure. It's really hard, <laughs> hard work. Um, but yeah, but no, that that was great. And I, I, yeah, I, I mean, I can't remember the feeling of, of completing it. It must have been pretty good. Yeah. But um, because, because you, we probably played it for hours as well to get to that stage or something. Um, but that was something you shared with your younger brother. Yeah. So, because I mean, if, if I'm going way back, grew up in London. Uh, yeah, South East London, Peckham, yeah. Okay, and it was just you and your brother that, that yeah. combined together yeah, for these games? Yeah, we, and we, we all, um, and we shared a bedroom. So there was like, you know, there wasn't like an opportunity to do something else or goes it like it was like we'd have to play the same game at the same time and and my mum would try and be as strict as she could with like you're only playing for an hour the games oh. aren't good for you and all this stuff I was like, okay mum yeah and then like oh we we, we we need to save it we, we need to save it yeah, yeah. like back then and that's the other thing with the make drive stuff there was no saving it you yeah. You stopped playing, that was it. So you had to play it for a long period of time to of complete course. the game. So you'd be trying to sneak more time in or leave it on and be like, we'll come back and play some of it more later or yeah. whatever. The, in old games like Resident Evil, you had to find the the sort of the typewriter ink thing to be able to save the right. game. But something like FIFA, there must have been able to bring out a bit more of a competitive element between you and your brother because it was there. You couldn't have a selfish yeah. game. So you'd have to play each other. Was FIFA well, Pro that, Evo? The, the, yeah, I mean, well, FIFA... Turned into Pro Evo, which then turned back to FIFA, I think. But um, the uh, the problem with for me was that uh, him being younger than me, I should have been better than him at most things. But sadly, on FIFA and Pro Evo, I wasn't. And it got very frustrating. Mm. So uh, it got to a point where we had to only ever play co-op together. So we'd be playing like Master Leagues or... <laughs> or career modes but we'd pick the same team but we enjoyed it and to be honest even now like he's 30 now i'm 34 and like the new fifa will be coming out and we'll be like oh i wonder if we could try and get a little cheeky master league in who should we be and we're thinking oh maybe wolves would be good to be i mean man united's a project at the moment so maybe we should we could be there because we do genuinely enjoy all the transfer window stuff yeah, aspects of, of it as well so but but we do that even to this day now more than we did like or would do like the online gaming I, I've, yeah. I've never quite got into the whole online thing i always liked having someone next to you or like um when we move on to other things we talk about like all the system link stuff with like halo and time splitters and track and field and multi taps and all that stuff but um but yeah no fifa was it was a big one but we'd always have to do it together like co-op because it, it obviously got so bad is that what you're saying it got so bad the arguments you lived you there were... may have Go been on. some arguments sure there may have been some control pads thrown across the room physical and... contact potentially oh uh, it's more than likely yeah, yeah. Okay. uh so yeah and we may have been banned once or twice and had <laughs> was consoles it taken, taken, taken away taken oh, yeah. away oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah where was it put you obviously in a house with your parents oh, you I knew know, where probably it was in my mum's wardrobe or something like that where yeah. we couldn't get to it for a couple of days and then like we'd, we'd be fuming <laughs> but then you'd have to work together as a team again to like you, you yeah you caused the diversion i'll get in there we could get it oh no there was none of that no like that you if, if we did that then that thing would have been chucked in a bin wow. well yeah there would have been none of that so you just had to accept your punishment because obviously you sort of fast forward in a little bit yes so you sort of be- becoming an actor wanting to do that uh, yeah. getting the first role on the bill pretty exciting what well, actually the, the, well that was the kind of second or third role i i graduated um 
drama school, then did like an unpaid play uh, at a pub theatre, which was really rubbish. <laughs> well, it didn't come up on Wikipedia, it so that, that's well, the problem. That's and you've t- good I mean, that sh- that's kind of gone under the radar in a way. But it was one of those ones where, like, you're doing this play and you're doing a really emotional scene but because it's a pub theatre. If there's a game on like a Saturday or whatever outside, you'd be in the middle of doing this really emotional scene, yeah. and then you'd hear, "Yeah, get in!" And you're like, "Okay, this is really difficult to maintain this uh, uh, emotional environment we've got trying to make here." Um, uh, but uh, then I did. Then then I got the in between us, um, which was um, like we did the first series of of that. And funnily enough, uh, I, I didn't have an agent at the time. Uh, it was just an open call through Spotlight. And um, I remember I had basically like five or six recalls for yeah. that. And it started off being like an absolute kind of cattle mart situation there was like 13 lads from my drama school there everyone was there like the chance of getting this is so Mm -hmm. slim because there's so many people going up for it and i just got recalled and recalled and recalled and recalled and then i was playing pro evo in the living room with my brother and we had these rubbish little deck chairs that we would put in the living room when mum wasn't around so that we could play it in the living room on the big tv and we were playing pro evo some kind of master league or something and the phone goes and I answer it and it's the casting director. I say, I didn't have an agent. So she came straight to me. And um, so I was like, yeah. And they were like, yeah, you've, you've, you've got the part. I was like, oh, my God, amazing. F- thank you so much. This is incredible. And we didn't know what the in us was going to be then, of obviously. Course. But for me, I was getting paid to act. Like the unpaid pub theatre go- job was the yeah. last thing I did. So like someone was paying me to act. I was like, this is incredible. Um, this is the beginning so, of something. This is Well, I mean, it was just an amazing thing on its own, you know. And so I'm just really happy. Get off the phone and I'm like, oh, wow. And then my brother just kind of turns around and he goes, did you get that job then? I went... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've got that job. He went, great, can we crack on with Master League? <laughs> so I was just like, that was the kind of thing. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah. So I've just gone straight back to playing Pro Evo. And it's yeah. like, it kind of says a lot about, A, the, the gaming was far more important than anything else at that time. And uh, also um, that my family don't care <laughs> about how any of that stuff. Uh, well, if you, so, listen, yeah. Which listen, is good, mate. it keeps you grounded. You hey, know. listen, we can't have one of the team Heading off with flights of fancy. That's what yeah, your brother well, was like. Listen, we've, we've started Absolutely. this. <laughs> so is that what you do? Like take Keep on a team in the and game. then uh, trying to the master oh, league. Oh, we do multiple years of a master league, constant transfers. Um, was he worried that then you're going to have to have a? I'm not saying that your brother in any way would start wishing you didn't have to do more paid work. But there is an element where you're like, actually, mate, we've we, this was the first contract you had. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Yeah, you signed on to be assistant coach. Um, but uh, no, I mean, it, it was just one of those. Things. None of us knew what was going to happen and how it would be and stuff. So, uh, yeah, but it, it was really exciting to be kind of, to, to, as I say, just get a job where you're getting paid to act. It's yeah. just the most amazing thing. About it. Did you work with the other guys at that point when you went no. to the first casting? So it was no, a, Joe, meeting on the first day. Hello, guys. Nice to meet you. Pretty oh. much. I mean, I, well, actually, having said that, my last day on uh, my last recall, there was James, Joe and Simon. Mm. And then there was two other lads and myself. Now, the two other lads and myself kept going and reading for Neil. One of them went quite early, and then it was me and someone else that were constantly going and going in and out. And then at one point, they did swap one person over with that guy as well. I won't say who that was. But, um, was he quite famous now? Or actor? Oh, that person? Oh, uh, no, no. But, but, I mean, I, I know him, and he's a top actor. I've seen him in a few yeah. things, but he's mainly worked in uh, in theatre. Um, but he's a very, very good actor. But um, but I wouldn't mention who it was. But um, uh but yeah, and uh, so I met them briefly, but that was it. It was the first day of rehearsals that we were all kind of like, so this is this is our little group. And again, back then you were like, well, we're doing a six week job. Yeah, we'll probably never see each other again. And yeah, lo and behold, years later, it's become something that people really love. Did I read right that essentially you had to take a job? in between filming of the the in between is one and two, and like had to go oh, working. Well, Ma- Madame Two Swords at the Scare Chamber. This yeah, was, this James was, was fitting kitchens. Um, uh, again, people think they see you on TV and they're like, oh, well, you must have loads of money because you're on TV. It's like, no, we got paid very little for series one and, and two, really. Uh, and uh, yeah, so, you know, we um, we had to get jobs in between. I say, uh, I think Joe was tutoring maths. Uh, sure. I'm not quite sure what Simon Bird was doing. He might have still been doing like studying for like a master's or something like that. Um but James was fitting kitchens and I was working in Madame Two Swords at the Scare Chamber. And and you had, was there ever a choice where you had to, in between his two or 
shall I stay on at Madame Two Swords? Oh God, no! That was never a true. <laughs> that was as soon as I found out that that was going again, I was like, brilliant! Yeah. I'd, I'd done the bill in between time. You mentioned the bill yeah. earlier. I did a couple of episodes of the bill, and then uh, the second series, and that was you know massive for that to get recommissioned for us. Were you ever getting spotted or recognised because the success Very of rare. I remember coming out of work at Madame Two Swords, and the first time I ever got recognised was just a bloke that was like, but "Were you on TV the other day?" He was like, "That show at E4." I was like. Yeah, yeah, and I found it really bizarre. And it was just about going before I went into like Baker Street Station to go home. And he was like, "Oh, can I get a photo?" I was like, "Why?" <laughs> sure. Yeah. And yeah, it was just quite an amazing thing. I always remember that it was the first time I ever got recognised for that. But then later on, I got recognised again um, because I was actually at work, and uh, I by this point got promoted to the upstairs section of Two Swords. It wasn't just in the scare chamber. Okay. I was doing all sorts of other bits. The voice of Big Brother, a pirate guy in the Johnny Depp Pirates of the Caribbean did, section. Did you go in with the CV and say, I, I can play a multiple uh, range of I've characters? Got Hugh's got such a good range. And they're like, you're not ready for this. You're the, not ready for this. You just stay in the scare chamber. But no, I got, I got, got promoted, promoted. What, what, uh, what is the scare chamber? In the scare chamber is like... Um, so you're all in boiler suits covered in fake blood. It's like the inmates have taken over the uh, the prison or something like that. Yeah. So people walk through this maze that's all dark and strobe lighty and all that kind of stuff. And we just would jump out at you and scare you. But we weren't allowed to touch you. We okay. would just come out and be like, you know, they'd put it's like a hand in your face and you uh, all that kind of stuff and do weird snorts and things. Or like you'd climb up the walls because they had the walls that were quite narrow and you could kind of climb up them and then kind of shimmy down them in like a scary way or something like that. But... That was that was my life for but, a good few months, and then you got promoted. And because uh, you know, when you were talking about the shimmying and everything, I played a game, The Suffering, on Xbox, which was it was an eighteen. Uh, I took it to uni with me and had to have a mate come and sit in the room. I was terrified of this game, <laughs> but I wanted to complete it. I just wanted it to be over. Was there any yeah. games that sort of scared you that you played? Oh, I remember. <clears throat> I wasn't very good with uh, scary games, to be honest. Uh, I'm not good with scary movies either. Mm. I just, I just not something that interests me. But um, I remember playing Alien Trilogy. Mm. I think it was. It wasn't maybe on the PlayStation One. There was like Alien Trilogy. I probably played it for like an hour or two. I was like, nah, too nah, much, too many face huggers. Yeah, this is all just too, <laughs> too scary for me. So would you, would you sort of stick to to games uh, that that you could really access into a little bit like well yeah my, my big i mean it was either sports based for me and my brother to play or like like the kind of scrolling beat-em-ups and stuff like that that we loved um but i i suppose when i got on to into like my kind of like mid-teens or whatever i was massive into the role play games like for me i don't know if we've jumped too far ahead but uh knights of the old republic is one of my favorite games of all time is that star wars based that was star wars based and it was set like thousands of years before like the original movies and stuff and you played a character called revan and um <clears throat> it was like one of those turn-based kind of like final fantasy-esque yeah. turn-based uh role play games but the options that you had to really the decisions that you made changed how your character looked the certain uh kind of jedi powers that they could have or not have were you more sith or more jedi and all this stuff the color of your lightsaber and all and i just thought it was so great that the the, the decisions you made not only gave it kind of replay value because you go back and then do something slightly yeah. different but also really genuinely affected how your character looked and behaved and people around them and all that kind of stuff so i think it was bioware that made it and um yeah that for me was one of was my one of my all-time favorite games i absolutely loved it and i think it was one of those games as well that told you how long you played on it and i oh, think it dangerous. took me about yeah, dangerous i think i racked up about 52 hours uh to complete it which you're like wow i've spent 52 hours just sat in front of this game but then also i went and completed it again in, <laughs> in probably in about 48 hours or something like that so about a good 100 hours on that game but, all right so so is that kind of like your element of playfulness your acting the, the desire to kind of direct or or navigate your character is there something that... maybe because as, uh, particularly like as i was younger any kind of those games i would always be and, and even like i'd be i was a big wwf fan as well mm. and so we'd always get like the raw or smackdown or whatever it was games and i'd always create a version of me that was clearly much more physically able than I was. Uh, but there'd always be a version of me. And even like the Revan character looked like me and all that kind of stuff and blah, blah, blah. And if you give him a name, I generally gave him my name. And all that stuff. Yeah. And then as I've got older, I'm like, that was so narcissistic. I, just, <laughs> I could have had far more fun. Like, And I think when I got onto like uh, Mass Effect, which I think was another Bioware game and love for the same reasons, Mass Effect 2, I think it was just like Mad Dog, Mad Dog Shepard. 
and he looked a bit weird mad dog shepherd that's fantastic so so with wrestling in there as well as football did that lead to wrestling moves used against your brother in any way 100 i mean i remember (laughs) uh we again we got banned from watching wrestling uh because it would be like my mum would go out or or mum and dad would, would go out for the evening and uh, as soon as the door would slam, we'd just have a look at each other and go, right, it's on. go upstairs, get the mattresses from our bunk beds. Yes. The mattresses would come down the <laughs> stairs into the living room, boom, they're there, boom, they're there. And then we'd just be practicing wrestling moves on each other. We'd try and watch wrestling whilst doing wrestling. We had the VHSs of like King of the Ring and all this stuff. I remember, um, the, I think it was King of the Ring or something like that, where uh, The Undertaker threw mankind off the hell in the cell. And it was yeah. like a 25 foot drop or something like that. And it was one of the. Trying most, to recreate that. Oh, we'll need more mattresses. We're going to need more. <laughs> <laughs> I know a good shoot just yeah. over the side. We could just jump yeah, down. Yeah, that's it. We'll just go. You go from that window up there. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, how we haven't genuinely like properly injured each other, I'll yeah. never know. I mean, we were doing like swanton bombs off the sofa onto each other. We just have like a cushion there to protect us and then just... But when the game yeah. came out, you were, I suppose, able to live through that again. You're football fans yeah. as well. like uh, uh, So you were able to try and be those wrestlers and create those characters. Oh, yeah. I mean, we just loved playing those games and, and doing that stuff. But there, there is there is something about gaming that probably more so than uh than tv and film really that you, you are that character and i think that's why people love it so much and get so immersed in it mm. is that you know you with tv and film as much as i obviously love those mediums you're being told a story but with gaming you are the story and i think that's what's so gripping and and uh, all consuming about it at times you know that overtake and, and as a football fan as well do you, do you have a team that you follow i'm a millwall fan okay yeah. so when um i don't know why i'm laughing i wasn't laughing don't, at millwall. don't laugh no i wasn't laughing. we've had at a millwall. good start to the season Let, listen the den's rocking i've been, <laughs> I've been i went and watched my team southampton in a, in a cup game uh anyway it's not important but uh but Mill, when the new fifa comes out the immersive side of you maybe you and your brother or you on your own would millwall be the first team you're sort of scrolling through well, it, it depends I, I i remember playing i think it was either like fifa 13 or fifa 14 or something like that and I took on, I took me a wall. But then I feel like once I do that, I then can't do it for a good few years. I need new teams and stuff. So like, yeah. I mean, I, the amount of teams I've gone through with Master Leagues and and You need new challenges, modes, Blake. That's you. That's you, you take you on new so roles new, as an actor. You want to be challenged. It. You want to be challenged. And uh, I won the when you've won the treble with Millwall, what more can you do? You get them promoted. You then win the treble. You know, I think I bought an 18-year-old Lukaku who... Was sure. smashing it for me so, at, at Millwall. Uh, well, an Andalek signing, uh, the finest. I think he was sort of like Belgian league. I don't know if he was. Um, I don't know if he was on. Uh, I don't know if he was at Chelsea at the time, but just not making oh, it into. Okay, maybe yeah. he was at Chelsea for that really short period, um, and Mourinho kind of got rid of him or, or whatever it was, and he went to West Brom on loan and, and Everton or something. Like that. I don't know, but, but I remember getting Lukaku in and. Uh, I can't remember who else, but I think a lot, a lot of the team that were just there were doing really yeah. well. Liam Trotter, shout out to Liam Trotter. Sure. <laughs> big, big up yourself, Trotter. Abdu, uh, but, legend. But, but did you ever find yourself, if you played a game, it's hard to then bring it into the real world. Like, I remember on certain games, you could do a printout, you could show other people, that's my team I'm uh, rolling with on FIFA, yeah. that's the team I'm, I'm working with. Did you ever, because if, if it consumes you as a game, when you were able to go out and tell mates, like, you wouldn't believe it, but I'm absolutely dominating on uh, FIFA not, 13. Not as people much. would look at you oddly and be like, Blake, what's happened to you? You're like, just into a game. The only person that would get it would be my brother. And I probably still on my phone, if I looked back long enough, could probably find pictures of I of a treble winning side celebrating. And I would have taken a photo of like Millwall or Everton or AC Milan or wherever I was at the time winning like a Champions League or something like that with them on the trophy. And I'd just be like, there you go. Yeah. Just done that. And he'd be like, well done, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we actually got it. Yeah, the the road. Or I'd fo- no. I tell you what. Actually, I would do. Yeah, is I would phone him when something really bad on the game has happened because my I, I've been with my wife nearly ten years now, and um, when I've been playing FIFA early in our relationship, and she would hear me shouting at the TV because say you know you've been peppering their goal. Yeah, for eighty nine minutes hitting the bar, keepers pulling out saves. You're like, how are you pulling out this save? Yeah. And then uh, they've just gone on the counter attack in the 89th minute and scored yeah. like the rubbishest goal you've ever seen. You're so fuming. It's like ping ponged around for a bit and then it's been tapped in and you're absolutely fuming. And I just have to like pause it and just phone my brother because no one else would understand. And I'd be would like, your wife not understand? I'd no, surpri- she would not. That no. surprises oh, me. Oh no, she'd be walking in front of the TV. She wouldn't care. She'd be like, it's a game. What are you talking about? And I was fuming. So I had to phone my brother and be like, 
Dane, you never guess what's happened. He was like, go and talk to me. I was like, yeah. This. <laughs> just to get it off your chest? Yeah, you know, like Snodgrass has run down the wing and just put, put a ball in. I'm just like, I mean, I, he, he's never putting a ball like that in real life. You know? He doesn't even have pace. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't even have pace. <laughs> Whatever it was, you know. The, and, you know, no disrespect to Snoddy. Snoddy. Yeah. Uh, snoddy Grass. You know, I'm on um, that basis. Um, but, um, yeah, it was, you know, I, but I, I would genuinely need some consoling. Yeah. And then, and then you get to this sort of, now chapter in your life the wife yeah. you've got kids as well yeah uh, how has the gaming changed is it is it changed dramatically it's changed dramatically okay um so when my daughter was born nearly six years ago i was able to do a little bit you know i think witcher 3 was the last game that i completed which i loved i thought that was fantastic really enjoyed witcher 3 i like um, the fact that you you know some people i chat to about gaming they never complete a game but you seem pretty when once when it's Slake's a, in it he's in it it's a mixture but i did get a bit obsessive with witcher 3 to the point where i'd completed the story and then there was just like the treasure chest in the middle of the sea to be found so the last kind of few hours of that game for me was me boringly rowing to the next kind of like treasure chest <laughs> then diving under the sea taking out a few like harpies or whatever they were and then getting the treasure which was pretty rubbish and then going back but i had to get through them yeah. all and there is actually one element of i think there's one treasure thing that maybe i didn't get which was underneath some kind of griffin or something like that. there's some kind of griffin monster but even though i had had like full power full everything like I, I was at the highest level i could be for just completing the normal story without buying all the add-ons which is another thing that i can't stand um I, that creature still had like the red skull that meant you cannot kill this guy run yeah. and i was like this isn't fair yeah. i've got one treasure chest to get i've just spent the last three hours rowing across the seas getting all these treasures the, the time the effort the, the effort passion, and time. And it was genuinely quite boring those last couple of hours but i had to complete that bit yeah but well, i loved the game overall i thought it was fantastic okay so so but, but when you said about like add-ons you don't like what is it that because now well, with i've games paid like Fort- for the game I've paid for the game. You've got my 45 quid. Don't give me another like two or three hours or whatever it is of gameplay that I've paid seven quid for. Or like, the, the, like I really enjoyed um, Injustice Gods Among Us, you know, so it's like, because I'm big superhero geek and you've got the Mortal Kombat kind of way of, of yeah. playing it, but it's DC superheroes and I'm probably more of a DC than a Marvel fan. So this for me was like right Ooh, on my street. Drop I, in, drop in well, straight away. No, no, yeah, no, no drop in. But no, the, the, obviously the movies are Marvel ones are better, but the characters in DC, I think, are much better. I love them. But um, uh, what so happened I'm playing there, mate? That's annoying. You well, can't yeah, talk well, about it. You know, I'm, I'm trying to complete the game, like get new characters, whatever it is, and do all of that. And then you're like, and now in the bundle, you can get Red Robin and someone else, and you know, whatever. Like the Sub Zero's popped into it. So I'm like, I don't want to have to pay seven quid to get those. You should allow me to earn it, earn them. Yeah, yeah. And I, so I get really frustrated with all of that add-on stuff it really gets my goat <laughs> it gets you goat and now you haven't necessarily you've got kids you haven't got that time to be no the last couple of years my son's two and i blame him for for all my lack of gaming now uh that little um <laughs> but uh yeah but, no so it's, it's really gone downhill the, the only thing I've, I've tried to do recently was i've pulled the wii out and okay. um so they've my daughter's played a little bit of wii sports mm. and mario kart and she's quite enjoyed them. So maybe I'm kind of laying the seed slowly but surely yeah. so that when they get a little bit older, I can get back into the gaming in a big way. Yeah. It's just um, like pulling the Wii out and just watching her reaction. Please, please yeah. be into this game. Please be into it. No, into but it. She, she, yeah, she, she is into it. And also she was very, very sweet for my birthday, completely unprompted. And I hadn't played a game in ages. Uh, she, my wife said, oh, what should we get for daddy for his birthday? And she said, I'd like to get him a computer game that I could play with him. No And way. so they got uh, Lego Incredibles. And we, we did play a little bit of it. And again, she really loved it. But again, my wife is very like, you should only play for an hour with her and all that. And I'm like, yeah. And now I'm the parent. So I have to be like, yes, yes, that's a good idea. Yeah. And I should stick to that. <laughs> but there's that element of the real joy of sharing. Like you and your 100%. brother, you share now with yeah. your daughter that she gets to play that. You're, you're together, a cooperative, rather than against each other. There's no selfishness there. Yeah, no. We work as a team. And also I... I'd smash her. Let's do it. She's <laughs> finally. She's, she's, she's winning. She can barely even hold the pad. God bless her. Her tiny little hands. She's kind of like doing that, and uh, so she can't like analog stick and buttons at the same time. Um, 
but yeah, no. So it's uh, it is great that sharing. But even like like kind of kind of segue. But uh, and going back on like, oh, like there's no rhyme or like reason. 80, there's no rhyme or reason. We're in the apocalypse, and the sure. rules don't apply anymore. No, they Chronology don't. has gone out the window. These are just uh, so I don't have something to do with my hands. I really I've, want to I, take them and just yeah. throw them. <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> the last section of this is the best bit. Uh, the, the, the bit I haven't learnt the, the words for. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but like like for me, gaming with my mates like, between the age of about sixteen and twenty was like maybe even earlier was like huge gaming with friends to the point where we'd have parties where we'd go to a mate's house and do like system link halo uh where we'd have like four people on the sofa downstairs four people on like beds and sofas whatever chairs upstairs playing what we we created attack defend so us four are a team those four are a team and it was it wasn't it was more than just capture the flag it was like you had to get the flag but then take it back to your base and do something while someone else is maybe just holding defense. So yeah, or- so it's not that you're both going flags at the same time. One one team is holding the base, the other team are trying to attack. Then after a period of time, if you haven't done it, the roles reverse. Got and you. they try and get your flag while you're defending. And, and it was brilliant. And when you were there playing the game and all of a sudden you'd be like, go on, go on, you're nearly there, you're nearly there. Yes! And upstairs you'd hear, no! <laughs> and again, that's so much better than the online stuff for me yeah. to really know that your mates are pissed off. <laughs> was really great. And um, and yeah, just sat there with them all doing the split screen. And like, um, uh, we talked about Time Splitters 2 earlier as well, which yeah. is one of my favourite games ever as well, because we would play, um, we'd get the multi-taps out. I always bought all the multi-taps and stuff. So we'd be able to do eight players yeah. uh, playing Time Splitters 2 and we'd do virus mode, which was... Um, they were infected. Was that the they were infected, infected with yes. like a green flame on them. And what we'd do is we'd take off all the weapons. There was no weapons whatsoever. Um, and there'd be all the bots on. So you'd have eight humans and maybe, I don't know, gosh, like, could have been could 12 or 16 it, bots. You? Yeah. So the, the, you had like 12 or 16 bots or whatever. And one of the bots would start on fire. And you'd have like a pattern of where you'd go. I remember there being like an airport hangar and you'd all go to one place in the airport hangar. Then there'd be another place. In the, and you'd just kind of run and stop and like, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? And you'd take the radar off as well. So you couldn't see any radar. So you'd only be able to see what your character could see. And as soon as one human person got infected, because by the end, it would generally be like 16 bots chasing eight people. Uh, and by the time one human got infected, all bets are off because they'd go to the safe places where you had your kind of rhythm of running around. And then that would just be it'd be crazy like free for all, and so you're basically playing like team like tag or something like yeah. that. And uh, just it's like the, a, it's like a physical movement of sardines. You just, <laughs> you just pretty get, much, yeah. But but that you said you didn't like scary games, so at that but point, that was uh, the times was the adrenaline. Scary. It was more the it was more the that was it is the adrenaline. You're like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. no, oh I can see him, oh, oh I can pass him, oh, god. but that kind of thing. But again, seeing and hearing all of your mates right next to you was the funniest things to hear them freaking out because they're about to get touched by one of the green flame guys or whatever was so much fun i feel feel like you can almost see it blake like because you'll smile at the moment you're like those are those best moments like they uh, really were like halo the the split screen time Mm. was amazing but you would cheat your mate you would try and watch the screen where your mate was going all of that but that was that sharing of of a game but you don't think that online uh has that if if you're playing online, you, yeah. you're just not able to be so. You're so again. It's a I'm not saying it's selfish, but it's a solo activity amongst feel, others online. It feels it to me. I mean, I, I haven't really done it enough, so I'm sure people will go. That's not the case. You do this, you do that. But for me, I just that, again, it's that tangibility. Just being able to kind of look at your mate's face yeah, yeah. and how annoyed they are. <laughs> Or really hear how scared they are and freaked out they are by like running away from something or whatever, just really meant something to me. And yeah. and like like FIFA Pro Evo again with the multi taps, play four on four, and the elation on one side of the sofa against the despair on the other side of the sofa, I just don't think can be matched by someone in Norway being annoyed at me scoring a goal. You know, it's not the same thing. Yeah, would would that be your happiest gaming memory then? Those those times, those years, and there was a few games that we played, like Time Splitters 2, Halo, the first Halo, and uh, like Pro Evo, probably like two or three or something like mm. that. Um, those were probably the happiest gaming memories. Uh, and International Track and Field. Oh, oh my hello. God. Hello. What, what, was your, what was your discipline? What was your discipline? Because you almost had to learn it. You had to learn Oddly. Really? Because I felt like I had a good technique for the swimming. Because um, 
<laughs> the uh, my brother was always really good at the, the the sprinting, which was like X and circle. And I'd try and do that thing of the t-shirt and like rubbing it on the yeah. thing. My brother would just do that, and somehow he was so rapid. He was absolutely rapid, and would win all the sprints. But um, with the swimming, it was the R R and L buttons on the back of the PlayStation. So I would. Put, squeeze the PlayStation controller between my legs. This is Tekkers, right? This here. is absolute Tekkers. <laughs> this is a, and I'd be doing this. <laughs> and I wouldn't get tired so much, but other people doing that or whatever they do, yeah. but that <laughs> absolutely smashed it on the freestyle swimming. It was absolutely brilliant. A lovely memory. So, would you like to, with, with your kids, pass on that, that they play a game for that reason, or, or would you, like you and your wife, limit it because you, you don't, you want them to have more experience? as opposed to just be immersed in that game on their own? Um, oh, I don't know, because I, I, I think that, like, there's so much great stuff that comes out. Like, when I mentioned Knights of the Republic and, and Mass Effect 2, you're talking about games that are one-player games that are all-consuming. And mm. again, like, those were games that, like, my brother would be out playing football, so I'd play that game, or I was a bit older, I was on my own, I'd play that game. And uh, that would rack up so much kind of gameplay. But what I loved about those games was the options and the storytelling. And, and Mass Effect was just blew me away in that I was playing that at a similar time to a mate. And we were always talking to each other about that. So what have you done? What choices did you make here? And all that stuff. And, um, you know, the fact that I could like, like he had like, a relationship with this Miranda character, whoever, who I absolutely hated. I don't know why. I just really didn't like her. She's all so, yours, mate. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was like, yeah, go on, mate. Uh, so, um, so when it comes to Mass Effect 3, he was still in a... His character, the, the story completely carries on with all of your personal choices. So in Mass Effect 3, where he was dating his Miranda and they're now together still in Mass Effect 3, in my one, she died. And I was quite happy about that. <laughs> I was like, so she was not in my Mass Effect 3 whatsoever because she's dead. And I was just like, how amazing is it that in two separate games, they give you the ability to have two completely unique stories from like yeah. your friends. The replay value on stuff like that as well is, is amazing, I think. so. Okay, yeah. well, I, I hold that thought about uh, <laughs> Mass Effect. But, but before that, if it was the end of your days... Uh-huh. Like, all right, just so you know, it, it's not. Today isn't the last. That's it, a relief. There is a relief uh, for everybody. Um, if the apocalypse is coming, the end of the world, what game would you have for the rest of your days? If you could only play one. I think I think I would go back to Mass Effect 2. I okay. mentioned that earlier. I just think, again, the replay value, being able to play it in different ways, the relationships you have with the different characters and stuff. I think it's so brilliant. I genuinely, that game blew my mind when I first played it. Um, and because it's got links and what you do then goes into Mass Effect 3, I don't know whether you get Mass Effect 3 as well because it all kind of feels the same. I don't know if that's cheating the system. Um, but uh, no, you no, can have one, okay, you can have one game. Right. So, but. You're but never Mass, but it's a good one. Is it the best conclusion. one? Mass Effect like, 2. Matrix, I thought Mass Effect 2 was better than Mass Effect 3. Okay. Because yeah. Matrix 2 is the worst. Because you're like, to be continued. Yeah. You're like, well, that's annoying. Yeah. So, you, 2. Mass Effect 2. I mean, I didn't actually play Mass Effect 1, but I do think Mass Effect 2 is phenomenal and is better than 3. Okay. So, that's so, the game for the rest. I, I think I would go for that, yeah. Okay, for the rest of the days. All right. So, if Mass Effect 2 is the game you could play for the rest of your days, it's mm-hmm. interesting because Lynx helps you stay chill under pressure. So, I'm going to find out whether you, Blake, can stay cool, calm, and collected. Oh, as I ask you as many questions as I possibly can on Mass Effect 2 in 60 seconds, see oh, how many you can get correct. God. And then, if you're lucky enough, you'll end up on the Lynx most chill leaderboard. Uh, Michael Dapper is there uh, with eight and a half. Um, for those of you wondering, hang on a minute. We haven't seen that episode. Don't worry. It's coming. That's well, I did a little cheeky wink ah, at the camera, good. but everyone missed it. It doesn't matter. Uh, so you'll get to join um, there. So uh, I love how you pointed below because I probably will be below. No, here. no, no. Well, I can move that. So whatever you get. <laughs> no, oh, I will be below him. <laughs> well, okay. Positive mental attitude. I like that. <laughs> so here we go. Then. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to look at you. Oh, God. This is. Five, I do feel pressure now. Four, three, two, one. Okay, here we go then. What's the name of the character you play as the on the game? Shepard. Yes, correct. Uh, what year was the game released? Oh, 2014? Uh, uh, no. Uh, <laughs> what century does the game take place in? Oh, 3000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they all live underwater. That's that song. Uh, no, 22nd century. Uh, where does the game take place? In the universe. 
<laughs> it's, it's, it's all over the place. It's multiple worlds. Give me a clue. It's a chocolate bar. It takes place in the Milky Way galaxy. Uh, oh. Which company developed the game? Bioware. Correct. Uh, what was the name of the project uh, Cerebrus began to bring Commander Shepard back to life? Oh, I don't know. Okay, Lazarus Project. Uh, oh, what is the name of the uh, insecticide species the Reapers work by proxy through? Oh, no idea. Oh, you really enjoyed this game. Uh, <laughs> it was years ago. <laughs> uh, where do the collectors reside? Uh, sh a shop. I don't know. <laughs> Mega four really. uh, um, That's it. Six seconds is over. Yeah, I mean, uh, I knew I did terrible at that. Yeah, I should probably just let you know. When I, when I sent you that email... I know one of the alien species are the Quarians. And there was oh, a guy called Grunt. That was Grunt. the next question. Was it? Well, if you'd have answered quicker, oh, I could have got there. There's I? Grunt. He's a big guy in it. Yeah. What I love more than anything. Garrus. Yeah. Blake. See, I know characters. You know, when you were the, the Man of Two Swords, like the, the Waxworks, and you couldn't touch someone, you yeah. know the perfect distance. Your arm length just comes about there. <laughs> and it years, doesn't... Of, years of training. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, congratulations. You got three oh, God. in 60 seconds. That is not bad. It seems bad. No, that's it's great. <laughs> yeah, I don't believe it's you. twenty seconds for one answer. It's perfect. Okay, that's a good ratio. Uh, I'll write in now. Um, uh, have you ever had any moments where people have got your name completely wrong? Because I'm going to spell this perfectly. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so I've been called Blake Morrison, <laughs> and also uh, I had my picture in a national newspaper. <laughs> uh, or did he? Uh, well, basically, there was a picture of me or Ralph Little in the national newspaper, and it said the other one's name. So, oh, uh, and I've had that multiple times with Ralph Little, actually. Uh, double R? Yes. Double I? No. Double S? No. Sure, of course not. Just testing you. I'm going to put a massive three there. Oh, by the way, we didn't get to talk about your goal. Ralph Little liked to play a little bit of football, whereas yeah. you scored that pe penalty. Yes, the winning soccer penalty. Thank you. 2018. That was probably one of the best days of my life. Uh, I'll put how far about down should I put it? Oh, it's no, just no, going to be on. low, isn't it? it no, no it, I mean, it does not deserve to be there. That's nice, though, isn't it? Second place. Well, congratulations. When's your next one of these? Uh, tomorrow. Uh, I'll be third tomorrow. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Blake, listen, uh, time's pressing. It's come to the end. That's it for games for the end of the world this week, together with Lynx. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching and listening uh, to the show. Uh, we're also on YouTube as well, so make sure you leave us a cheeky review and spread the love. Uh, any plans now? Yeah, I'm, going, I'm on stage. Going on stage. We well, better get going. Better get um, going. That's, that's it for this week. Singing and dancing today. All right then. Bye.